Andrew's 32-year-old daughter, Lizzie, who was at home in the Borden house at the time of the murders, was arrested and charged with the horrific homicide. Taunton Jail, Sunday, May 11th, 1893. My dear Annie, My spirits are at ebb tide. I see no ray of light amid the gloom. I try to fill up the waiting time as well as I can, but every day is longer and longer. I begin to think the tangled threads will never be smoothed out. My friend, do not make any plans for me at Christmas. I do not expect to be free. The trial that followed was a sensation, but a jury of 12 men ultimately found Lizzie not guilty. Everyone knows the famous rhyme about the Forty Wax. But like many of the things that are said about Lizzie Borden, it isn't true. Andrew was struck eleven times. Abby was struck nineteen times. Fact, not fiction. The Forty Wax never existed. Furthermore, it wasn't an axe at all. It was a hatchet. Did you tell them about, you know, you didn't tell them about the song that you were singing on the way up here a little bit. Well, before I, before we came here, all, all I ever really knew about Lizzie Borden is just a little ditty about giving her mother 40 wax and uh, the story, uh, the television movie that was uh, made starring uh, Elizabeth Montgomery. And so, actually just came here because I love history and I want to get to see some more of the real facts and, and find out more about the story. And it's been an incredible day. Absolutely, it was worth the while to take the drive and, and it was a great experience. Lizzie has become a caricature, really. She's become the legend of Lizzie Borden, an axe-wielding, murdering, crazy... Maniac. Yeah. <laughs> and so we wanted to come to the Historical Society to find out who the real Lizzie was. Uh, I would encourage people to come to the uh, Fall River Historical Society and, and go on the tour and, and get informed on the uh, actual facts of the Lizzie Borden case. There's a lot of speculation about what happened and you hear a lot of paranormal and you hear a lot of rumor and they make her out to be a bad guy but there's not a lot of evidence behind that so we figured the historical society was probably the best place to find more hard facts and really get our heads around the case instead of just just going to uh, seances or different things that explain the paranormal aspects of it. Our curators are widely recognized as the world's top authorities on the Borden case. Their groundbreaking, critically acclaimed work, Parallel Lives, a social history of Lizzie A. Borden and her Fall River, was selected as one of the best books of 2012. One of the most important artifacts in the Historical Society's collection is the hatchet, which was found in the house and brought into court as the murder weapon. Now, when the piece was analyzed by Professor Edward Stickney Wood at Harvard in 1893, he found no traces of blood on the hatchet, but he did find a single strand of hair, and we have the hair in the Historical Society's collection. Now, popular legend has it that the murder weapon was an axe, but in fact it was a hatchet, which is a considerably smaller instrument. Now, when Professor Wood found the hair on the hatchet, he thought, of course, that if this was the murder weapon, this hair should match hair taken from the heads of either of the victims. So he immediately requested that hair samples be removed from the heads of both Andrew and Abby Borden. Now this is a hair sample from Andrew Borden's body, taken of course after he had been murdered, and a hair sample taken from the head of his wife, Abby. And the interesting thing is that when the hair found on the hatchet was compared to the hair from the heads of the victims, the hair did not match. And further analysis proved that the hair found on the hatchet 
was not a human here, it was an animal here. So clearly this was not the murder weapon, although it was brought into court as the murder weapon, it was not. This is one of the crime scene photographs that we have of the Borden murder case. Uh, this one's showing the body of Mrs. Borden between the bed and the dresser in the guest bedroom of the Borden house. It's been assumed that this was how Mrs. Borden's body was when it was found on August 4, 1892, but that's not the case. We had a recent donation to the Historical Society, uh, the private journals of Andrew Jackson Jennings, who was Lizzie's uh, defense attorney. And in those journals, there was information about the position of Mrs. Borden's body when it was found. Her body, in fact, was about one foot underneath the bed, which said that she had definitely tried to escape and had likely ran around the bed and put herself in a cornered position between a dresser, a wall, and a bed. The only way out was to try to go under it. And that's how her body was actually found. Dr. Bowen came in. He tried to take her pulse. He sat the body up and then put it back down in the position that you see it here. This is a very important photograph that was recently discovered by the Historical Society in a private collection. The photograph is very important because it's the first time we've seen an image of Lizzie in her private environment. This photograph was taken about 1916, and it was taken on the piazza of her house, Maplecroft. It's an amazing photograph because Lizzie's holding her favorite Boston Terrier, one of her last Boston Terriers, named Laddie Miller Borden. And everything about the photograph speaks volumes about Lizzie. Lizzie was very exacting in her life. She was very particular about everything. She loved her home. It was her own private environment, and she was very house proud. And when you look at the photograph, the placement of everything on this piazza is absolutely perfect. The flower pots are perfectly aligned on the table. The tablecloth is perfectly aligned. So it says a great deal about who she was as a person. It's a very important photograph, and I, I think, in fact, one of the most important photographs ever uncovered. The Historical Society is at the forefront of uncovering new items pertaining to Lizzie's life and to the Borden trial, the Borden case, and making these items public. I thought the tour was absolutely amazing. The exhibit here is really fascinating and, and such a, a sense of history and um, I'm, I just couldn't be happier. So we came here for the, I guess to put it in a cliched way, the story behind the story. <laughs> and uh, well we got it, I think, because it was, it was a really great it was a great tour. Absolutely. We had a wonderful tour. I gotta tell you, it's the best eight dollars that you could spend to, to know the truth of what's going on with Lizzie Borden and the history of Lizzie and Fall River. We guarantee you'll come away with a new perspective on Lizzie Borden. But there's much more to see at our museum. I came over to the Historical Society primarily to get a better understanding of Lizzie Borden and the facts versus the fiction. Uh, fantastic amount of artifacts here. Uh, but that aside, once you got into the Historical Society building, you look at the beautiful architecture, uh, what they call the polychrome paint, the doors, the moldings, uh, the fantastic uh, craftsmanship that went in here. As an artist, I am just incredibly impressed with the quality of artwork that you see here. For instance, look at this mirror. I mean, this mirror apparently came over from Britain because they could have plate glass in Britain, but it has been lined with diamond dust on the back, and the brilliance is just fantastic. I learned things that I was not aware of. For instance, I was not aware that Fall River was the largest producer of cotton cloth in the entire world in the 19th century. I also was not aware that this house was at one time a stop on the Underground Railroad. And in another part of the house you can see a bookcase which was a secret entrance to the basement. You could spend more than a day here and you wouldn't understand or see all of it. The gift shop is a real treasure. It's so much fun to visit. They have such a variety of interesting things. Our museum shop and boutique offers a wide range of appealing merchandise fashion accessories and jewelry, to distinctive Christmas ornaments and old-fashioned jams and jellies. And if you're looking for books about the Borden case, we have the largest selection available, including used, rare, and out-of-print editions. The Fall River Historical Society, in my opinion, is a place not to be missed. If you're visiting the city, 
it, it's a must see. You're just five minutes away from our museum, so why not pay us a visit? You'll be glad you did. It's an experience not to be missed.